Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. We, uh, it's been an interesting week, uh, and so lots to talk about. I don't know, have you already covered issue with, like, all the, the phones going down? No, I haven't done that in it. It's so I, been too busy. I've been yeah, too busy with farm life, homeschool, homesteading, family. Homesteading, sourdough bread. So, um, so, it is a busy time. There are better, better things that take precedence. Right. So, so um, <clears throat> what we're doing this morning is kind of multitasking. So I'll let you in on that on the front side so you're not asking the question. If you have toilet paper rolls, paper towel rolls like this, you save your dryer lint. And then we just, we take that dryer lint and we stuff it in our, in our toilet paper rolls. And uh, this way makes nice, convenient little fire starters. Uh, you can even pair it with like beeswax, beeswax, uh, so that you have something to sustain your your fuel. Uh, uh, we even save like old corn cobs. Uh, pine cones. Pine are good. cones are good. All these things are really great fire starters that help you when you're building a fire in the stove. And I know we're coming out of that season. Or but, even outside. But uh, be reminded, you know, that March has provided us with some of our larger snows. Um, and, uh, you know, the late frosts have really been something that have uh, gotten fruit trees and things year after year. So there's plenty of opportunities uh, to still burn wood. And uh, and it's also reliable. So if something were to happen and you were to lose, uh, you know, fuel, run out of fuel, lose electricity or something like that, then you've got uh, wood, heat. And so, listen, uh, I know that that's um, uh, various uh, takes on that from an insurance standpoint. And certain insurances won't even carry you with a wood stove. I am one who would rather go without home insurance than I would a wood stove so uh, I will never go without wood heat I think it's the most reliable sustainable and and uh, safe method um, and it's in most environmentally friendly method uh, frankly uh, so despite some of the misconceptions and, and misconstruals of that conversation well and there are home insurances that will allow you to have there there are wood, wood burning fireplaces there are if you all have so, questions uh, and you're in our area region, feel free to message us and we'll try to give you give you answer any questions uh, about what what we have or what we do because we want everyone to be able to do um, do their own thing. We want you to be have a sustainable life. Um, and so with that, uh, one obvious provocation is is the fact that we again, this isn't the first time, something has happened actually several years ago or a couple years ago maybe there was a a phone line that went down but it it devastated all communications with uh all of your not just phones but electronic transactions that utilize those communications such as ebt cards snap cards those government issued uh funding um and debit cards, credit cards, all of that was, was put to an end. So our, our day makes that particularly interesting because we, there are even businesses who no longer accept cash. Um, and, and so I don't know how they would fare in a situation like that. They would just close, right? I mean, they would have to, um, and, or they would have to modify their, their policy immediately. Um, so guys, look, there's a, a real aspect um, whenever things like that occur uh, that it doesn't matter what your opinions are. It doesn't matter what you think should happen. It doesn't matter the way that you've glamorized or romanticized an idea of, or you've clicked like on the cabin that asks if you would do without Wi-Fi or if you have said, I would live off a grid or I'm... Uh, identifying with one of these these movies that they're putting out about these things. Listen, none of that matters. It doesn't matter. None of those things happen. Um, and yet, you don't get to avoid the very real circumstance that you may be in a situation where you are left 
to well, have to, having to build and, a fire so left to communicate there, without those There are those three modern. things that I want to bring up right now that I think that um, you need to be aware of. Number one, make sure you always have cash on hand. I think I've got lint in my hair. Number two is to make sure that at least one of your all's vehicles has fuel. Um, and number three, I made a post about this, I think, yesterday. If you do not have a emergency buddy, you need to find one. So an emergency buddy is somebody that when there is something, when something goes down, like the the service a couple yesterday was it yesterday or a couple days ago I don't know a couple days ago um this person will be available um through different communication um they will be um and I think like with my with my buddy they they were automatically on the walkie talkies available and they ready. And they knew what they were supposed to do. It's a readiness conversation. <laughs> and so, so, so when we say, we say this all the time, know who your people are. And listen, they will check on you. Like right. you, they are there. When during... we say that, now there may be an instance where we, we all of us who are, are trying to prepare and, and we're God-fearing people, we may bind together on a larger scale. But the sheer reality is when we say find your people, we don't mean that we're your people. Uh, we can't be all of your people. Uh, that's It's just outside of our bandwidth. And frankly, the communications was down. And all of a sudden, you're not our people. Find <laughs> the people that that are your people when the comms go down. Find your people that are your people when the gas runs out. Find your people that are your people when the electricity is down. That's, that's what we mean. We mean... You so, really have like to have these, something in these place. These emergency buddies should be in close proximity. And when I'm saying close in proximity, um, my children know that if something happens to Vance and I, and I know this is morbid, but if something happens to us, um, they know whose house to go to, and they know how to get to their house. They've actually practiced this, unbeknownst to me, on their own. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, another story. But they know... Who they can go to, who they can trust, if something happens. Um, and so, if you do not have, if you do not have an emergency buddy, um, I highly recommend that you make plans with somebody, if not one or two, uh, three other people, um, because you can have plan A, plan B, plan C, and that not so work out. All of these, any any institution will will normally do. Escape drills, uh, flea drills, in survival. They they talk about the difference in having a a get home bag. So when you're with you, you need something on your person that has what you need that's going to sustain you for long enough just to get you home. And then you have uh, something that is like a uh, well, I guess more important would be like an an IFAC kit or something. So your immediate uh, first aid sort of kit that you would have on your person like this is a right now of immediate aid for, for life and survival then your get home bag and then you might have a something that's akin to a, a bug out bag so there's a bag that gets you home but then you might need a bag that that helps you to flee in a situation this is something that the military practice inherently right because they have to be ready to go and um, and so knowing all those things and knowing the difference, so having one that's in your vehicle and knowing what that bag is, what is its purpose and what is it designed to do and what is it not designed to do. So if you have to change its use on the fly, you're going to know where you stand. Um, all this sounds like uh, doomsday prepper stuff, and that's not what we're saying, but it does trigger that conversation because it is the same conversation. Well, and hopefully the 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 things that happened this past week have been an eye opener for some. Um, and so, and and it is when I take these instances, it's like, okay, where was I not prepared for this situation? What can I do to help our own situation here right. if something was to happen? It, um, and it's not. And again, it's people get on to. 
Um, the ones who are speaking, like, they call it doomsday, but I don't, I don't, look, I don't look at it as doomsday. I'll, I'll look at it as taking care of my kids, taking care of my family, looking out for my loved ones, which, if, which includes family and neighbors. If you stockpile things, keep them in a closet, and never look at them, check on them, use them or anything, or test them or practice them, you're not, you're not, you're, that is poor, uh, that's poor readiness. Uh, so the prepping has a tendency of doing that to say in this event, then I'm going to like switch modes and go into like Mission Impossible. You're not going to be very good at that. You have to have a lifestyle. You have to build that. So, yeah. the, so what you want to do is just prepare. So you, you buy groceries all of the time. I do buy have... groceries so that you can rotate things that you yeah. use, things that you know how to use, how to cook. Um, so you need to know how to cook those things. Don't don't buy things, all these raw materials that you're not going to use. That you don't know that you're not going to use, right. and you don't even know how to cook. Right. Don't buy a hundred pounds of flour and not know how to and not know how to make your own sourdough. Uh, that makes you a, a useless or bread in, you, in general. You know, a useless um, person. Yeah. But also, you know, if you have not started putting back or buying a little extra, I highly suggest you start doing that now. I do have a pantry. Um, challenge that's on our website um, just to help you get started because a lot of people don't know um, how to get started in doing that and it looks like I keep I don't know if we are coming across okay because I think I think we're having slow connections with our internet this morning um, so I don't know what that is about so I'm sorry if there's delay in our in our video in our live yeah, right now. hopefully you'll be able to go back and watch things so this is, is very important. It's one we hope to extend to others so that we can uh, put that out there to see and make sure that our friends, our family, those closest to us, our church gathering, that, they're, that they know here's what you can do. Here's what you need in your pantry. You don't need, uh, you know, uh, I made the comment before, you don't need 100 pounds of, of green beans and, and that's it or, or say a, whatever. You don't need to stock up in just green beans. You need a well-rounded meal. You need to think in, in poundage of food. You've already heard me say that. Uh, think like you, you have a meal. And, and by weight, it's easy to see that meat can be half of that just because of the density of it. So thinking of your poundage, uh, budget yourself on a, on a supply. How many pounds of meat do I need? How many pounds of greens? How many pounds of of other sustainable grains do I need um, and so and then go from there right so that way you don't end up with just nothing but green beans you've got green beans other and things. peas and, and potatoes yep. and, and, and you've got rice and you've got flour and you, so, so diversify and these are things that you can use that aren't going to sit there and then you have to throw away that would be wasteful um, but then the, the next thing is is building your home that's in a sustainable way so that life what what we will find is obviously i'm going to be more stocked up in the fall after the harvest where we've gotten vegetables all year and in, in the winter so i'm gonna my store in the winter is going to look different than my store uh in the in the spring or in the summer and and so we're we need to be cognizant of that but you have to understand there needs to be an ebb and a flow a pattern uh, to your living so that you're living in a more sustainable way where you're producing and not consuming. And, and I want to say something uh, right now uh, just to clarify what, what is our motivation. Uh, it could have sounded at first like we were saying everything's going to go doomsday. We're, we're, we're preparing for a doomsday event, a stuff hits the fan sort of a, an event. That may come. But what we're saying is not that. We're saying like live this way. Nothing's going on. It's a great time to stock up to be sure that your family is ready for any event, whether it is something, you know, a burglary or, or a siege or a fire or a it could be anything. We, we want to know who, who we can rely on. We want to know that we're prepared for those events. We want to know uh, anything. If there's a well, gas leak well, in our and home. And not only that, we are Christians. And so our job as Christians is to help those in need, especially those that are within um, our congregation or it our, is. And our, I would go, our group, so, right? Our family. So and that is, that's true. So we want to find those people so that we're not just relying on those we need. We're being that, 
that person, that family for others. Now that's a, a give and a take, so we understand that's true. But here, here's where I want to get to the crux of the matter is that, listen, Scripture does provide for these applications to our regular lifestyles. Mm -hmm. And I want to explain that because it's not, it's not my fear, our fear of government or the power grid or the weather that, that drives that, that motivation. It also is not our profound level of compassion for everyone out there who doesn't want to prepare Though they they we love them, we hold have compassion on them, and and the reason we do is not because they're great or useful, but it's because they're in the image of God. It's because God we honor God in such the way that we honor those who are in His image. Uh, but most expressly, we have command to to fulfill this sort of love with the brothers, that is, other believers, those who are reading God's Word and here, we're, we are morally bound to them. We're one body with them, one spirit with them. And so these who are our people, they're those that were of one, uh, one faith. And, and, uh, and so it is important to acknowledge ourselves uh, as within groups, within the, the groups that we're in, people being, we we've m might have mentioned before about being a nation and how that's defined, it is defined as being a people who are of the same faith, the same economy, the same language, you know, the same, uh, all of these same circumstance, you know, so, so we're building that, but we, we, you got to understand scripture does speak to these things. Mm -hmm. And, and so, and I'm, I will share a link to a video later in the comments because I think there's a real danger uh, right now that I think as Christians, we need to navigate this carefully. If you're not a Christian, I hope you are able to navigate this carefully because you're, m you're probably more confused than any of us. Now, um, there are those who are, who are Christian who are seeking to obey, prepare, uh, equip others, and and honor God, and do all these things um, to to exercise and see the law as a rule of life that helps us. Um, there, but there's also those because of this fad, because of the the great inconvenience that COVID was, that losing your phones are, or or power outages can be. They're preparing too. And I didn't even know it was a thing um, to call it a trad life, to say like moving back to traditional living. What's funny about that is, is they don't have a choice. The economy has, has tanked. Inflation is, is at such the level that everyone's having to learn things that they don't like to do, that they would not have done had they had, they had the affluence that would allow them to just purchase. But what you do know is there are circumstances in which the Christian will not be free to buy and to sell within the economy of the world. There's two world systems that are at work in Scripture. There is a, a kingdom, heavenly, otherworldly sort of uh, world that we are engaged with. And there is the world that is... Uh, all of those that are unbelieving, that's that's under the prince of the power of the air, or the that or Satan, you know, or the, the the dragon of Revelation, or something like that. So, so if we take this and we understand that there's something otherworldly about the way that we'll do things, there's something that's go that we're going to find strength, comfort, provision, and joy in gathering together and functioning in a tight knit community of people that we can rely on. When, when all those things go south, there, there's something wonderful about that. So now, here's the danger, is there are those who are trying to seek the benefit of the church and what we're doing. 
and yet not have that foundation that <clears throat> that motivates us to honor God, to be prepared for the day that comes, to look to the heavens for our Redeemer is nigh, to, to think always of his glorious return, um, to work the ground from which we were made, uh, to, to provide, to behold the ant uh, who works without a leader. And um, all of these scriptures that come to our mind, and there's there's dangers on both aspects. There's dangers because uh, these people are going out and they're, they're turning what we're trying to do into a fad uh, that's that doesn't have a foundation and and they're they're causing others to even respond against this but but i i want to caution you when when you listen and i and i'll share uh a link perhaps in the comments that you can see something that i'm responding to but listen um if if you hold a view that it doesn't matter the uh, circle that you find yourself in. I think you're badly mistaken. We talk about making this small circle that you can depend on one another. That matters. Absolutely. Those people matter. They better be dependable when, whenever the, I need them. That's why they're there. And, and, and I better be dependable whenever I'm needed. That's why I'm here. And... So that circle matters, and it is true in the event that the Christian must either buy into a worldly system or sell out to it, however you want to voice that, then you better be prepared to make your own sourdough and not buy it, or have a source, or better know someone in your circle who makes it so that you don't have to buy it. Uh, we've talked about that before. Cash is good, but resources are better, um, even for exchange, so that we can go to these people and share with those who have need. Um, so this is very, very important. There are those that are saying that, no, look, you can, you can serve God and you can do these things in, in any situation. Now, please don't misunderstand us. We don't say that that roasting your own coffee beans, grinding your own flour, making your own sourdough, homeschooling your own children provides you with the salvation that's only given in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. But we are saying that in Christ, we're granted life more abundantly and free, which means we're not bound to all those things. We can literally give food to our friends, and they give food to us, and we... We share and we, we have all these things. And it's a wonderful thing. Um, but it really is. If we can argue, there, there are those who try to argue that Western culture is inherently, or the benefits of it are inherently founded on Christian values. Now, I do think our nation was founded on Christian values. Um, but we have to be careful. What are we calling Western culture? Uh, a lot of times people have that confused. They're, they're not viewing the, the pioneers, the pilgrims, the Puritans who come over here when they say that. Right. What they're viewing is a, is a sort of new age model that is, that is government schooling or that is uh, our modern grocery system or... Um, this consumerist culture that we that we now see, westernized Christianity. Yeah, or yeah, westernized Christianity. Uh, friends, don't don't make that mistake. Um, you know what what I'm trying to get at here is be careful on what that foundation. You say, hey, was America founded on Christian principles? Yes, I think so. I think you can look at the state constitutions more so than our than our federal constitution, but you can look at this state constitution and see, yes, there were Christian principles at work, imperfect Christian principles in, in play. Um, but are we going to say then, and, and I think we have to be careful, if our goal is to champion and say, I'm going to be a Christian in every sphere, I found myself in the sphere of, of, uh, of say, government schooling. Friends, you, you do a little bit of research and find out that our modern model of education that's prevalent around us was founded on Marxist ideals. Uh, understand how 
you know, the, the little town of New Harmony was created. Indiana. In, in Indiana, in New Harmony, Indiana. And, and, and look and see how it was created. How does that play in to, to the education system? It is not Christian from its foundation. So you know, if we chip away our Christian foundation, we can't expect to experience those benefits. I agree with statements made like that. The trouble is, is you're trying to chip away communist foundations and build something Christian on top of it. It's stupid. So I want to propose something to you. Is instead of asking, how little can we change our lives? How much can we just be the same and unchanged and, and unuseful and, and, and unprepared and still glorify God? Instead of asking that question, because that's what's being answered, is you don't have to do this. You don't have to be do exactly what we do to be Christian. I'm not going to address that at all. I don't even want to talk to it. I want to ask you this. What if, now imagine, provoke your imagination. Uh, all my homeschool families know this. We love imagination. Uh, really get the wheels turning and imagine with me for a minute. Every Christian, if every God-fearing family who loves dearly their wife and their children, if, if all of them, 100%, not even one did not, and they all began educating their children within the family, the way God says in Deuteronomy 6, to teach these things diligently to your children in your house when you walk along the way, when you lie down and when you rise up, if you do that, how would you impact the culture? Well, and I want to take it a step further because I think that there are people that are taking Christians that are taking their kids out of the public school, but they are still using that same system to educate their kids. We're talking about to something totally different. Right. Totally, you, you want totally, to be that Deuteronomy 6. Yes, totally the, different. The parent um, is the educator, and, and that is important. What we don't mean, I'm not saying Christians... Spend money, uh, exploit your budget uh, to send them to a private to a private school that is expensive, whose teachers' uh, resume is built within a government system, so they really don't understand uh, classical or let alone biblical education. So, but I'm saying legitimately, what if all Christians, from a biblical standpoint, saying, "Look, God's made us." He's made us the provider, us the educator, us the one to apprentice our children. Then if those, I don't even really vouch for this culture war thing because I think in a terms of other kingdom. I'm, I'm a member of a thriving kingdom with which economy is doing well, the government is doing well, the fellowships are well, the identities are great. And that's this kingdom of heaven, this kingdom of God that doesn't fail and cannot fail. However, I'm here as an ambassador so I want to ask you if what happens then if you're a culture warrior uh, or, or a post-millennial, why don't you stop wasting your time trying to convert what's inherently godless from its foundation and say, what if you pulled aside this way and, and then you became the one who set the standard for education? What would it look like? Well, it's like no, what if, it's an imagination. No, no judgment that, calls. You know, it's like the same comment. You, and this has been going on again for decades. They, they... It seems like they see the problem, but they're using the same technique as their solution, which is no solution at all. It's still facilitating the problem. Right. Um, so and that's you the, can't. That's the biggest thing for me right now. Um, even within a lot of our churches in our Christ, in our in in some of our Christian communities, is that they are viewing the family as something so small and insignificant, um, and then they're sprinkling. Christ on it, expecting things to be different. Right. So, in my view, that it seems like they're resetting to an earlier day where maybe it wasn't quite as bad, where it wasn't as far along, and that, so as if they were comfortable with these sort of mundane or worldly but things. But that's not realistic. But not now. Well, for one, it leads to the same end. Where does it get to? It gets to where right. we are right now. Well, right. So let's shift the gears for those that have tuned out and gotten mad at me for what I've just said about education. What about our, our economics? Imagine if every God-fearing Christian was to, to become less of a consumer and they began to, to ask of God, how might I become 
you know, productive with my hands. Women out there uh, who read Proverbs 31 and they feel like this is daunting. It's overwhelming. How could I ever be the Proverbs 31 woman? The example, your your the expectation is not your perfection. Well, but, but it's the, not it's not about all the things that she does. It's a fact is that she's productive and she's being a good steward. She's It's not about all the things that she's doing, but she is being a good steward. She sees what God has blessed her with and she is being responsible for her household and her children. Right. So we understand, like we do buy things from a grocery store, but there are grocery stores who have exhibited ungodly uh, priorities that we do not shop at. And and until we're able to build, my goal would be to build my entire grocery, uh, be able to fill my pantry with only those items that are produced, packaged, or preserved by brothers and sisters in Christ. Historically, and when the church, when, when the world would suffer famine, the church would not because others would send relief to them. Now, imagine with me, we're using our imagination, right? We're playing a game of pretend. Imagine a Christian community where everyone uh, built and produced in such the way that they were not in need, that they would be preserved when the world went south, when they were prevented from buying and selling within the world economy, whenever all of these things would would transpire. Imagine that for me for a minute. It, well, let me take it a step further. Even so, and I'm going to use homeschoolers as an example. And I know there's a lot of um, there's a lot of my friends that homeschool. Excuse the music in the background. Um, but when COVID happened, guess what? Our lifestyle didn't change. Our home life didn't change. That's a good we, point. our kids, were not affected at all because we provided that in our home, um, and it was a it was a stable foundation built upon on Christ, then upon family, and then you know it extended. Our children were not affected whatsoever. And that's um, a great point because I think yeah, there were certain outings that they closed and 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 did all their things with, but. But the reality was, is yeah, we man, we still had school and nothing changed. We st all of our family time was the same. We still had church and nothing changed. We had all of these things, and so that that's freedom. That's life more abundantly than the rest of the world, and we saw it. And frankly, there were others who saw it, uh, and they grew angry. They grew angry because uh, they said, "Well, why should they have such liberty?" Why should they have such liberty and, and us not? Well, isn't that what the scriptures say? That whenever we provide those things, now it doesn't say that we're going to be free from those effects and all of the same oppression. It, it says that, that all the world would come to worship the red dragon. All of the world would be affected. That that there were those of, of Christians that would even be killed, but well, but God would always preserve. Now, well, but, at, even, but even to the point where, you know, when people say... Or they look at your life and they say, wow, why, why does your life look this way? Why does your family look this way? And your answer can simply be Christ. Um, so uh, here's what we're saying is there is no requirement to grow a garden to be saved. There is no requirement to homeschool to be saved or there, there's nothing like that. But the saved person's life begins to look far different. You will somewhere in your Christian journey ask, how will I produce with my hands that I might, that I might be profitable uh, unto God, that I might provide for my family and provide stability for my children and, and be of use for the aid of others? Uh, and bind together the body of the church. How will I seek to provide for my family and church family in the time of famine where the rest of the world will suffer dearly? And you will ask those questions. You will ask the questions when the days come. When, and, 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 and let me finish. When the days come where I can't buy or sell in the marketplace... How then will God preserve my family in that remnant? How has he commissioned me 
to do so? What foods must I grow, must I make, must I share and preserve or whatever? You'll begin to ask yourself certain questions that will look different given the context that you find yourself in. That's, that's fine. But let's not say that, well, they're making that a requirement for salvation. Let's not say, well, you don't have to do that. Listen, if you're this minimalist, then, then get off the band. Don't quit talking about these things. If you're one who, who wants to say that you're a culture warrior, if you're one who, who says they want to they wanna go out here and make an impact for Christ, but you have no vision for that the entirety for the for the logical end of what that means for you to have christian institutions everything else if you can't imagine or pretend with me the way that we just did of an institution that's not founded on marxism if you have no capacity to imagine yourself either starting building on the foundation of christ and, and building uh something that's inherently godly or or producing at home something from that godly motivation, quit talking to others about it. Quit trying to be an influencer because you're not very good at it. If if you expect to go to ungodly institutions, ungodly governments, and, and convert these things, understand uh, Christ, this kingdom of Christ, is not dependent on any of them. You need nothing. You have been equipped. If you are a parent, God has equipped you. He, he calls you, and, and, and so he equips you. So it's not because you are equipped, but because that is the call he's put on your life. There's no question about it. Listen, you, you want to say that, well, you don't have to do these things. Listen, do unbelievers have to be married? Do they? That's a serious question, you isn't mean, it? Unbelievers are believers. Unbelievers. Do unbelievers have to be married? Well, you would say, well, I mean, that's weird. I mean, marriage is a godly, it's a biblical institution. Um, but they don't believe in God. Why would we expect them to receive the blessing? And, and they would receive, receive the curse. Furthermore, we see how detrimental because what happens of the, the children who are born out of wedlock, uh, who are unholy children. This is a judgment of God when people aren't married. But you see, it's a creation institution. God created things to be a certain way, and, and it's good. It's inherently good. So I want to argue to you, it's good for all people. Mer uh, for believing and unbelieving, it is a good and godly institution for them to be married. Why? Because God created things that way. It is in the same way, it is good for parents to educate their own children. Now that might come as a shock to you. Uh but if you're an unbelieving parent, I still think I am on your side. I think that you are the parent and I will fight for your right to, to govern the life of your own child. That's good and wholesome. In the same way, it is inherently good for someone to garden and to produce. It's not good. There are unending detrimental health effects environmental effects and all these terrible things when we farm out the production of our food to large corporation to governmental institution or or other things and so uh, that's what I'm saying is that you see where how I'm I, hopefully you see where I'm trying to tie this together that we're not making a requirement but we're saying Here's what blessing looks like. What if, what if God answers your prayers? And what if God grants you stability in your home? What if God grants you freedom so that you don't have to ask permission on how, how to educate or feed or, um, or disciple or employ your, your own children? What, what if God blesses? What it looks like is a parallel economy. It looks like something that is not involved at all well, but the in bottom, these worldly the bottom institutions. Line, and this is the point we're getting we're getting at. There are Christian platforms, Christian influencers who are trying to dissuade and discourage um, that change. That change. They're literally telling you that it's okay to stay put where you're at. 
to not examine your lifestyle, to not make the changes that or or react to your convictions. Um, and it is a soft and and disingenuous approach to say it doesn't matter what you do. If your platform is is people matter, friend, you're you're headed down a a difficult and a dark road. It does matter. It matters what God says, and it matters what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are very real consequences for your action. And and listen, there's even more drastic consequences for your inaction. Right. And so, fine, don't prepare, buy. But whenever whenever you're forbidden from purchasing in the world market, what then? Then you will need people, Christians, who have prepared. Well, but you know what they will say. Yeah, then, then they'll then, say... Then they'll say, you have to provide me with food because you're supposed to love me. You're supposed to love your Because neighbor. it's a people-centered religion. Um, but, well, but my thing is, is I'm telling people, the way I'm loving people is telling them to start now. Gather your stuff. Take care of your home. Build your home on Christ. And in the end, it will, it will build and it will build hope. You know, it will build hope that Christ will see you through. But you cannot remain inactive. You cannot remain passive and sedentary and expect things to be different. That's you just you just can't. Um and my struggle with this is is to you know with with the the traditional the traditional uh husband and and, and wife aspect of it. Now and we, we kind of discussed this er earlier I think they are they are horrible influencers on the social media who are influencing this this trade life, and I and I think that that's what some of these Christian platforms are trying to get at. But in doing that, you're lumping everybody else who is trying to glorify God in their lifestyle into these groups. Um, absolutely not. You don't have to do sourdough bread to be a Christian. No, you don't. That's fine if you don't want to. But I tell you what, the reason why I do it, and I have numerous reasons, um, doesn't have to do with me being a trade wife at all. Or, or you liking it. Or you, there is a level of necessity. And that's okay. It's okay to act out of necessity and to rear your children in a in a more industrious way so that they might be useful in those times of necessity. So Well, I'll and you will never hear me discourage you. If you want to try those things, by all means, I want to encourage you to try some new things where you're feeling those convictions. Get out of your comfort please, zone. Please act upon those convictions. The Holy Spirit is giving you those convictions for a reason. Amen. And it's not just to be, and I, I think there are so many people looking for excuses not to react to these convictions. And so, I've seen it over and over again. So now here's where I'll come clean. And, and I say this with those who are brothers and sisters in Christ with whom I, I find myself, at least at this juncture, in disagreement. Um, and... And it's uh, so Founders Conference, who I love dearly, and I've spoken with Tom Askell personally, and, and I love him. I, I don't see the value in some of his decisions uh, navigating certain things, but in in his uh, at the recent conference, they platformed Ali Beth Stuckey. Well, and Ali Beth Stuckey has been a grounded voice for a lot of people. The problem is is she is one of these who has said people matter, people matter. We've heard that. We've already heard that song and dance. Black lives matter, white lives matter, these lives matter, unborn lives matter. Listen, your problem is that you've made people the motivation. This, well, they, they've the been center, the center. Right? The center. And, yeah. and you need God at the center. You need a top-down theology. You need to understand who you are in His image. He, he's the reason and the motivation. And His Word is that guide. Uh, his his law is that clear uh, clear path, and his gospel makes the way uh, is, is that way of life that that we might follow in through that narrow gate. Um, so, 
watch that. I'll post that in the comments. The problem is, is, you know, we can talk about, I, I, I just, I don't see the benefit or the godliness of being a parent and neglecting your parental role in order to platform to talk about uh, others having a good parental role. Yeah, sure, you might change diapers when you get home, but 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 let's not let's not send them off. I hear all the arguments free free education or or daycare, you know, all for the glory of God, whatever else. Listen, God will never call you to glorify yourself or your ministry or his name while neglecting your family. How do I know that? Because scripture commands that a pastor is not equipped, he's not permitted to preach if his household is not in order. So, this is this is clear evidence that no, you're not permitted. You're I don't care if you have 80,000 people listening to you and and you're preaching the name of God and you've neglected your family, friend, you're in sin and you need to repent of it. And so that's that's just that that sort of clarion call to say don't do this. And and furthermore, if if you can speak on your goals, on your vision that you See, if God answers your prayer, if you pray for your children and God answers the prayer for your children to have a, an abundant and a fruitful life and it involves nothing of marriage, it involves nothing of motherhood or fatherhood, of, of generational thinking, it involves nothing of raising others in the in the love and admonition of the Lord, you have forgotten the blessing of God to your children and your children's children. All of the scriptures has something for us to think much, much bigger than yourself, much, much bigger than to pray selfish prayers for your children or to teach them to pray selfishly for themselves. We, we've got to leave this. You are of the kingdom of God. You belong to a people. You are not a people. You were an individual. But you're no longer you know an individual, and now children? you are a people. I pray that they are the voice in the wilderness. Yeah, I really do. Sure. Because we're getting to the point where, and I told you this, all these ministries, all these pastors are dropping like flies. You should be praying that your children are a voice in the wilderness for the ones who are longing to, be, to, to, to learn and be educated on the things of God. If you're going to tell me the only thing that you pray for your, ch your children is wisdom and 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 knowledge, um, L I think that that is a that's a shallow answer. And in this day and time, um, of course we need wisdom, but we need to take it a little bit step further and, and hoping that our children can be the truth. Um, and speak the truth. Well, be careful if you're, we've said before, if you're, uh, or I've posted it elsewhere, that litmus test being if your theology doesn't work in, in another context, in another region, in another era, it's a false gospel. Well, I, I want to say this, that we're so used to saying, you know, it doesn't matter what you do. You don't have to do. You don't have to do. You don't have to do. And we never hear you have to do. You have to do these things. Well, I, I want to make clear, um, through time, and even in the New Testament, even after the gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul commands that fathers raise your children in the love and admonition of the Lord. And he tells children, obey your parents, honor your parents. This is the commandment, the first commandment that comes with a promise that your days, that you would live long in the land, that your days would be long and you would live long in the land. So there's clear indication that God has an intended blessing for his people. And he has an intended pattern of living. And, and, and so be careful that in saying, well, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that, that what you do is you wipe out the Proverbs 31 woman altogether. That you say you don't have to work with your hands. You don't have to uh, be diligent to provide for your children in the night and all throughout the day. That you don't have to be diligent in supporting him from home so that your husband might be the influence in in the in the uh, in those areas of influence within the political square. Um, it, be careful that you don't sit here and cut out what God taught in the in the day whenever Israel 
did, and by God's command, had to raise their children to be diligent in collecting the manna so that they did not have to collect it on the on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, God has said, I will provide, you will you will do this this thing with diligence and with care and um and so be careful about that we literally pray that lord grant us our daily bread be careful that you are not teaching raising your children in such the way that they don't ever have to make bread this is like for us guys we can think of this you don't pray uh you don't pray for a hole and, and lean on a shovel dig Pray for the whole dig with your hands. You're so so quit using God as a means to an end that you get to decide. Right. At the end, God is building his kingdom. Christ will build his church. Now be useful. Be useful in the hands of your maker. Let him mold you and change your life radically. We didn't have all these things. Like we're constantly changing, developing, assessing, critiquing ourselves, saying, man, what do we need? Where are we not being fruitful? What, what are things we're well, throwing but, away? But, but isn't that the difference here? Is that there are so many who are choosing to view um, what they think is a Christian lifestyle, and then they're, they're too busy looking at what these people are doing instead of being like, like a resourceful Christian who who is looking at their own life, repenting where they need to be repenting, and then and 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 seeing where they're maybe being having faith in something else other than Christ. Be that Christian. Don't be over here saying, "Well, I don't know. Um, you don't have to do these things, but I'm choosing to view their life a certain way, and I refuse to to look at my life and seeing how I can be a better steward. How I need to be raising my children, how I should be looking at my household and having, and, I, and I'm going to use this, this phrase, but ha my feet are, po or, are pointed toward home, right? There's so I, many I times. Like the expression. Um, there, well, it's used by somebody else, but we'll, we'll not talk about that. But if you find that your, your, your feet are always pointed outside, pointing away from your, your, your home to, to social media, being an influencer, your time is wasted on social media. Um, that's an issue. That's a problem. And you have no right to sit here and judge judge the women who, who are trying to view their lives a certain way, who are reflecting on their situation, on their children, who are building their home. You have no room. So You have no grounds. So as I think we bring this, bring this to a full circle here. Um... I think that I, we together, I think, want to acknowledge if you're, if you're a Christian, there's nothing more godly for you to do than to work with your hands, to prepare for stability in times of great adversity, to raise your children in the love and admonition of the Lord, and to you know, educate them and disciple them and prepare them in the way, like the way we raise our children is, I don't need you to be able to do all these things. I need you to be able to teach your children's, your children in a way that will allow them to teach their children to do all of these things. They, the God preserves a remnant of people and, and you're on losing ground if you want this middle of the road way. You know, what you need is you need to raise your children in such a way where they can provide for all they they know the recipes to pass down. Like quit settling with this idea that you don't need what your grandparents taught. It's been long forgotten. Now, for some of you, you've had your grandparents, you've taken it for granted, or you don't care, you don't want to learn those things. Fine. I don't. I have rabbits. I'll never be able to ask my grandfather how all of the tricks and all of the concerns with their health and how he addressed them in, in his years of experience in raising rabbits. I will never get that. So you can, you can go on and do your own thing, but guess what? I long to learn those things that were lost, that are lost if we don't regain them. And, and I forbid to deprive my children to say, you go do you 
and it matters not what you work for to preserve for future generations. You will need to. Listen, your people, Christians are only saying it's okay to not do these things, to not be producers, to not grow gardens, to not go to church, to not homeschool, educate your children within the home. They're only saying these things because we live in a generation that we outsource everything. Everything. I mean, not even one thing. We outsource our education. People come to church with the expectation that the pastor will educate their children. It's foolishness. It's foolishness. I am not your child's educator. You are your child's educator. Um, and it's, and, and we have such this mixed up mindset. And so again, we didn't, if you want to reach back to older days, reach back older than what you're willing to and realize that the Christians, those Puritans who came to this country, they came to this country understanding it was their God-given duty to raise their own food and have the freedom to do so, to have the freedom to possess land and not have it taken, to have the freedom to raise their children without fear of their persecution or, or, their, or, or anyone's oversight to, other than the, the word of God. They, they came fighting for all of the freedoms that you're saying you don't even want. They don't even matter if you're one uh, like Allie Beth Stuckey. I, and, and, I, and I'm not saying this is her approach. I think that she seeks motherhood. But boy, I don't want anyone listening to her advice on these things that is so soft. She, it's without consequence. And friends, I, I really think that we're in an era that's going to bear much consequence. Uh, you're in a very important generation, a very important generation and and God has called you for such a day as this. Don't screw it up. Don't, it matters what you do. It matters the decisions we're going to make as parents, uh, that you're going to make as grandparents, that you're going to make as, as children of your parents. Uh, it matters. It matters more now than what it has in a very long time. And so, so don't act as if you do you and then glorify God with that. No, 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 no. Let's, let's glorify God. And then we'll figure out who I actually Look, am in well, that matter. Let's repent and believe. Repent and believe. Repent and believe and expect life to change. Because it will. It should. It and if should it, change. If it doesn't, I think you've got something different than the biblical Christianity. You've got something of Western Christianity, American Christianity. And that's a thing. That's a thing. Everyone's giving these clarion calls and, and, and what people want. They, they have these big platforms. God give, has given them a voice. And then they say... Uh, it's like a flat soda can, like just, it doesn't matter. Just just kind of be happy about it, rejoice, say that you're glorifying God in what you do. Well, but it's typical but it Western look Christianity. It's Western Christianity. Um, and so we need to, I think we need to recognize that there are certain uh, Christian platformers that we need to flag there are certain people that we need to be aware of their their positions, um, and and I'm talking about every position that they have. Whether they they talk about this strongly, if they talk about this over here softly, we need to be aware of it. Um, we need to be aware of the ones who are lax in their parenting, who are lax in stewarding, who are. Um, They need Unauthentic. to lead by. Yeah. They need to be. They need to lead by example. That's right. And and so and I think I think God tells us to to look at their their fruits. You know, not not their not their words, right? Their their fruits, which usually is in in their in their actions and their lifestyle. So, so let's close. Let's close with this. If if you're do, if you're trying to become more prepared for days that are ahead for just simple stability in your home. If in the event that nothing happens, it's still good. It provides you with financial freedom and blessing. Uh, all those are good. It doesn't well, depend and on helping those in need around those you. Need. If you're yes. preparing, if you're preparing for the Lord's return, if you're preparing, look, we support you. You're, you're acting, you're acting as the ant. You and we are, want to encourage you to do these things. That's right. And so we're, we got your back. Uh, we're trying to do the same things. And and we, we want we need people of action, not people 
of that are that are uh, mundane. Now it can look mundane, feeding the animals, watering the animals. Don't tell me that that's extreme and it's not mundane. It feels very mundane in the day to day. Yeah, it does. Okay, so don't. This isn't a question of radical or ordinary and all these different things. I'm not telling you to make radical changes. I'm telling you to make changes. Um, glorify God in a very real way and it will look different and we support you we're with you guys and if we can help you reach out if you can say man what can we do here's our church situation what can we do here's our family situation what can we do hey here's our insurance situation what can we do here's our investment strategy what can we do here's our here's our gardening plan what can we do man we'll give you we'll point you to resources where we've said yeah we've asked that question before i'm going to tell you who we went to to find that answer uh, we want to help you because we support you. We want to see uh, a new economy. We want to see God do His will on earth as it is in heaven. But listen, what that what that means is that we're going to be in the earth but not of it. There's two kingdoms. We want you to build this big, glorious kingdom that we're a part of if we're Christian. Quit, quit confusing these two uh, and, and and be careful. We want you to say, to step back and to say, we love these brothers and sisters. Uh but there's some error there. But but we see we see something that raises a flag for us. Yeah. Okay, listen to your preacher. If you're listening to this video, stand back and say, are there any flags? Because it's not perfect. That's what we're trying to teach you. All of this situational awareness. These people who are of action, who are doing great things. Whether it's it's by, with children who are being trafficked, it's with you know government overreach, or it's from you know crisis of of health or or of weather disaster circumstances. It's always preparation. These people are those who are watching everything. They're seeing things before they happen. Uh, I, I tell my children, that's literally my job. They're uh, our watchmen. It, that they're, watchmen. They're the, our watchmen. The Bible <laughs> talks about watchmen. The one, you know, in the night watches. And I tell them in my job, that's my job is to see problems before they happen. It's productivity. I'm a production worker. Is that glamorous? Is that too radical for the theologians of our day? No. it is. And the, I make sourdough. If she makes our, it is the mundane of it all, and yet we are radically glorifying God, and we understand how God's preparing us so that we might prepare others. And and so look, let's let's bind together on this, but but let's not let's not fool but ourselves we want, we, into inaction. We want we want to guide you away from apathy. We want you to warn. We want to warn you of not being lukewarm. We want to. Um, if you can look around you and say it's okay, we're not we're not of the same same mind here. Okay, you you need to understand. <laughs> yeah, a quote by Rachel: "You can see a train wreck coming." Yeah, you sure can. It's it's on its way. Um, but look again: step out of. Don't. We're not asking you to be uh, driven by fear. We're asking you to be driven by God's word. And, and act differently because well, of it. Well, and I will tell you, if if you have faith in Christ, if you have hope in Him, you He will lead you in the right directions. He will, again, convict your heart in the right ways. Um, and and he, he does work all things out for those... For the good, good of, of those, those who love God and are called according to His purpose. purpose. Romans yeah. 8, 28. So. Listen, so if you are, if you're one who can't do something, that's fine. We, you can't do everything. This is why we say have your people. Find those starting closest with you and find those that you can uh, purchase or trade from who are Christian. Let's buy from Christians. Let's sell to Christians. Let's build this economy. Let's do this thing. But I'm not willing to go to these godless foundations. And, and I will tell you, let me tell you, you will be influenced by the ones who you surround yourself with. No doubt. Make sure you surround yourself with people who are proactive, who um, are looking to God to sustain them. And What do they say? Bad company corrupts good morals? Dis yeah. Disregard the ones who are, are lukewarm and apathetic. That's all I'm going to say. But we've gone, I think, over an hour. Yeah. A, we uh, have things a to A bad do. apple spoils the bunch. Hey, do, has anyone ever told you that a good apple makes the rest of the bad apples good? Oh. Doesn't happen. Does it ever say that the unleavened yeast will make the rest of the, of the loaf unleavened? No. 
If there's these sinful connections or bad foundations, get out. Leave. If you're somewhere where a false gospel is being preached, leave. If you're somewhere where a that's built on communist Marxist foundation, leave. Get out of that. Let's let's find a good foundation. Foundations are important. We've talked or, about that before. Or if you can look around you and you do not have, you know, an example. I'm going to use myself as an example. If you do not have somebody older, and I'm going to say elder, an elder woman teaching you how to do things, if that's vacant in your church, that's an issue. Um... Look around you and see what, what, what those women are teaching you to do. If it's teaching you to gossip, if it's teaching you just to be social, if it's teaching you um, to disregard certain responsibilities as a woman in your household, I'm going to encourage you to find a new church. And I think that's the same for men too. If you don't have men in your church that are um, godly, godly um, fathers in their home, um, who are responsible for for their their wives and, and households? Um, I would say you need to be surrounded by men who are also having their feet point toward home. So anyway, I'm gonna step back from my soapbox. Guys, we appreciate you. We're on your side, but man, we are in times where you gotta think clearly and critically, and this is all part of it. Every mission. Every mission doesn't matter if you're in a in a physical battle, a spiritual battle, a military battle, a, a you know a ministry battle, a church battle, um, a household battle. You got to think very tactfully, and everything ma everything matters, uh, and what you do, and all that circumstance. So, guys, uh, uh, I'll try to share or post that that one conversation. It's an example of brothers and sisters who say good things. Uh, some of which that I agree with wholeheartedly, but things that I see are are landmines. Yeah. And and I stumbling need stumbling blocks. Th they're stumbling blocks, and and so that's what we're talking about is watch out because man, the landmines are many, and uh, and, and it's extremely uh, huge consequences. So we're gonna get off here, um, and I'm glad for those that have stuck around or who might view it later. Um, and, and I hope that it does equip you, that it's part of a good and fruitful conversation. Um, and again, we want to continue that conversation and give you resources. If you think of something that you're like, hey, I don't know this, I would like some extra eyes and ears on this so that we can dig into how can we, uh, man, we're willing to step in and help you with that and just, just reach out because that's what our goal is. Um, we don't receive any, any money for any of this, but we do... We do love to support the saints. We do love to hear how God is moving in other other contexts. You could even just give us a testimony and say, "Look, man, look, my life has changed. This is different, man. It's different. I was on a, I was going to die a young death and not be a part of my my children's life." We had somebody meet us in a store one time, tell us, "Like, man, my life is different, man. I I exercise and I do things different." Well, yeah, he's not part of gym culture. But he is part of this godly culture that says, man, I'm willing to live differently because there is huge blessing that God gives through through this action that he spurs me to. So all that, man, we love hearing that. That's awesome. So uh, we're, we're here for you. And uh, and we're here for all of those those blessings that God gives. So, so hey, uh, y'all enjoy your Saturday. Uh, be fruitful. And, be productive. Uh, be fruitful and multiply. Magnify God's name and Christ's name in all of the earth beginning uh, with those closest to you, your spouse, your children, then your church, your, then your extended family, and uh, then your community, and then the rest of the world. Uh, don't don't get it out of order. In the, yeah, in that order. In that order. So we'll, we'll check with you guys later.